my magical mischief makers, welcome to today's episode of Why Come No One Told Me That, which is my series where I do these little focused videos that talk about the different aspects of makeup and skincare. Today we are doing an introduction to color theory, specifically how color theory applies to mixing colors. This is the follow-up video to the video that I did the other day about racism and makeup and kind of the responsibility that we have as makeup artists to be able to accurately color match any person that sits in our chair. And it is also going to be the foundation for foundation videos because it's going to help you kind of hone that skill that gives you the ability to look at a color and see what the subtle differences are so that you can color match yourself or anybody else if you happen to be a makeup artist. And you can totally take this information and really build on it and practice it a lot and become like a color expert or you can just watch this video and have this amount of information be helpful to you. The level of commitment that you give to this is really up to you. I'm also trying something kind of different with this video in the sense that this is very much a concept and principle tutorial and then later this week I'm going to do videos where we get into the actual practical application of this information as it applies to color matching foundation on different skin tones. So hopefully you guys can kind of bear with me while we do this video that's more like a little art class and uh, temporarily seems like we're not really talking about makeup because I promise it all comes back around and this information will be very helpful to you. So in a second I'm going to change my camera setup so that you can see my artist palette and I'm going to use some color aid paper and a color wheel to kind of explain some different things just like terminology and principles about color theory and then we're going to use some paints to mix some different colors so you can see how that all starts to fit together and I think it's going to be pretty fun. Let's do it. Okay my dudes what we've got here is a basically very simple version of the color wheel using some color aid paper swatches and I just wanted to use this to explain a couple of terms we're going to be using and also illustrate a couple of ideas concepts. So first we have the primary colors red blue and yellow and then the secondary colors purple green and orange. My apologies if you learned this in kindergarten. Theoretically all colors are some combination of the primary colors these guys. You make the secondary colors by combining the two primary colors adjacent to them on the color wheel. So you get orange by mixing yellow and red, purple by mixing blue and red, and green by mixing blue and yellow. Colors have three characteristics. The first is hue. Hue refers to the color that you're talking about. So red is a hue, green is a hue. It's the color in its pure form. The next characteristic is saturation or intensity, and that refers to the amount of the hue that is present in a given color. So for example, this is a pretty pure hue of green, whereas this is a less saturated green. It's just not quite as bright or intense. It's just less saturated with that green hue. And the last characteristic is value, which refers to the lightness or darkness of a color. So for example, purple has a much darker value than yellow. This green has a darker value than this green. This green has a pretty similar value to this blue. This blue has a much lighter value than this blue. So value has nothing to do with hue or saturation. It purely has to do with the lightness or darkness of the hue. So you can have different values from color to color, obviously, or different values within the same color family. It's just a measurement of how light or dark something is. So the next thing I want to explain is the importance of color relationships. Colors are very influenced by the colors around them. And one of the most important relationships, especially when it comes to any kind of design or mixing colors, is that of the complementary color. Complementary colors are the colors that are opposite one another on the color wheel. So blue and orange, yellow and purple, red and green. Complementary colors do two things to each other. When they're placed side by side, they both look brighter and more vibrant. And when they are combined together, they neutralize one another. So when you're mixing paint, if something looks a little too red and you add in a little bit of green, that's gonna neutralize the redness. So my goal here is to give you guys some exercises and some tools that you can use to strengthen your eyes and your mind's ability to see differences in color so that when you're doing your makeup or someone else's makeup or you're just living your life, you can with confidence decide what foundation you're gonna use, what bronzer you're gonna use, what cheek color you're gonna use, and what's gonna meld perfectly. And um, one of the first things that I recommend doing when you're trying to hone that skill is picking up a bunch of color swatches and then kind of seeing if you can figure out what the differences are. I have this absurdly expensive set of color aid paper that I did admittedly buy 10 years ago and has lasted me forever, but you don't need to do that. You can just 
pick up a bunch of paint swatches or something. So here are a couple examples of what I mean. We're gonna look at these different colors and see what's happened to them to make them be different. Oh, I almost forgot. When you are first learning this information, I think it's really helpful to pick up one of these color wheels because they have these handy little windows that show you what will happen if you add each of the primary colors or white or black to a different color on the spectrum. I also wanted to say that this is an exercise and as you practice it, your mind and eyeball muscles that help you to know what colors go into what colors will get strengthened and it'll get quicker and quicker. So this is kind of overwhelming at first, but as you practice it, you'll be able to quickly look at a color and say, oh, there's a little bit more green in this, which means I actually need to add a little more yellow, etc." Okay, so starting with these two pink colors. So obviously they're both pink, but this one has more of a purpley pinkness to it, whereas this has more of a peachy pinkness to it. So that means that these both started out pretty red, but had a little bit of white mixed into them to make them more pink. You can see that on the color wheel. If I take red and I add white into it, I'm gonna get pink. But what makes this one more peachy pink and this one more purpley pink? Well, if peach is a little bit more orangey, and in order to get orange, I would have mixed yellow with red, then that means that this probably started out as red, had a little white mixed in, and then a little bit of yellow. Not a ton, because it's not full on orange, but just a little bit of yellow to make it have that slightly orange hue. Whereas this one, a little bit of white added in, although it appears there was less white added in because this is darker than this one. And then it has a little bit of a purpleness to it. And if in order to get purple, I mix red and blue, then that would mean that a, just a touch of blue was mixed into this one. So we have a warmer pink here and a cooler pink here. And here we have a couple different blues. They're pretty much the same value, so the same darkness. This one has a little bit more of a turquoisey look, whereas this one still seems like a pretty true blue. If anything, it has a little bit of a violet undertone to it, but it's very slight. So if I were mixing these, I would say this one looks like it's just had a little touch of white mixed in there. And if anything, the tiniest little bit of red. Keep in mind that we're talking about if we're mixing colors, I'm just gonna remove these secondary ones. These are the colors that we're working with to create these other colors. So I would just have mixed maybe even the tiniest little bit of red in, just barely. But with this one, it's a little bit desaturated, right? It's not quite as bright and it's also got a little bit of turquoisiness. So I'm thinking that it probably there was a little bit of white just a tiny, tiny bit. It's not that much lighter than that blue, but it's a little bit lighter. Tiny little bit of yellow because it's got a little bit of that turquoisey green undertone, but it's not as bright as a turquoise like this or something, which makes me think that it's been kind of neutralized to not be so bright, which means that there was actually a tiny little bit of red mixed into that as well to make it not as bright of a turquoise. So yeah, pick up one of these and get some paint swatches. And then I recommend starting with color differences that are more obvious and with colors that are pretty close to a primary color, like how these pinks are, you know, not that far distant relatives of red. These are not that far distant relatives of blue. Before you get into like really heavily mixed colors, like, um, you know, more fleshy tones where you're like, wait, what the fuck is this? This is this looks nothing like any of these. <laughs> so start with more obvious things and train your eye and then work your way up to things that are not a super recognizable color in reference to the primary colors. All right, it's paint time. Yay! So remember how I said you can mix any colors out of the primary colors? That was a little bit of a lie in the sense that pigments are not perfect. So theoretically, you can mix any color out of the primary colors. However, when you mix pigments together, they tend to dilute and it's very hard to have like perfectly true primary colors. So realistically, if you want to get really advanced with this, if this is something you're interested in, you kind of need a couple different options for each primary color, specifically a cooler and a warmer version of each primary. I'll put in the description box the color choices that I recommend because it does matter tremendously. And you will see if you go to any art store, there are about 700 million paint colors you can choose from. So I'm gonna dispense out my mixing primaries. I've got a kind of lighter, bright orangey red, also known as cadmium red light. And now I've got a deeper magenta red or quinacidrone red 
or quin red, cadmium yellow, and actually an ochre color. There is some debate amongst painters about which ones you really need. These are the ones that I tend to work with. And ultramarine blue, which is a more red blue, and a more green cyan blue, whoops. And I'm gonna dispense out some white. I'm not putting out any black because realistically, you don't need black very often in paint unless you are actually painting something that is black. So I thought it would be helpful for you guys to see me mix a couple of colors so that you can get the visual for how colors come together. And then I'm actually going to mix a couple of different foundation colors so that you can see that regardless of someone's skin tone, the components are essentially the same. And the skill of being able to see what needs to happen to adjust a color is not changed by how dark the color is. Let's start off with this pretty peachy pink. So this is a pretty peachy pink, so I'm gonna use my more orangey red, but it's not as orange as this, right? So I'm gonna put a little bit of this more purpley red in there because that's just gonna be too bright, too orange, right? And clearly this is less saturated than this. This is very bright, whereas this is diluted and it's also a lower value, right? It's it's much lighter than this, so it means I'm, I'm gonna add in a little bit of white and just see what happens. And this this process is all about just asking yourself, you're constantly being a detective, right? Like, oh, is this, is this too bright? Is this too dark? Is this, you know, what, what happens if I add white? And so much of it is just playing and don't be too hard on yourself. You know, like it, it takes time and practice, but it's, it's fun and it's therapeutic and you can kind of learn each time. And, and there are times when I mix colors and I go, oh shit, I need to start over because I mixed too much of that. And now it's, now it's too diluted. And it's, it's okay. It's okay that there's a, a learning curve. This was an exercise that I learned um, in a really badass art class that I took in college. And it's just great practice for your eyes, but you don't need to be perfect at it right away. That would kind of defeat the purpose of practice, right? So I'm getting pretty close, but it's still too dark of a value. So I'm adding in a little more white. Let's get pretty damn close. I'm just gonna add in the tiniest little bit more white, but I don't want it to get too much more diluted. And I do think it needs just a touch more oranginess. So I'm mixing this, this tiny little baby amount of yellow and white in. We'll see if I regret that because I was really close. I also want to mention that you only need this many mixing primaries if you're going to be doing this exercise. If you just want to paint shit and you're not trying to match an exact color, then you can get away with one of those sets that just comes with like pretty standard neutral primaries. But uh, so if you're just wanting to get into painting for the fun of it, you don't need to go out and spend a ton of money. But if you want to practice this exercise, then you do need to have a variety. Okay, I think that's as close as we're gonna get. Any any difference here that we're seeing is just the difference in medium. This is a flat piece of paper. This is a somewhat wet paint, but you get the idea. It's kind of fun, right? Let's do this kind of olive made a baby with forest green green, yeah? So because this is green, we know we're working with blue and yellow pretty much as our base. Now out of my two blues, I think I'm gonna use this deeper one that's got a darker value because this is a pretty dark green. And then out of my yellows, I'm gonna use this kind of more ochre color because this is not super bright and this is a pretty bright and light yellow. I'm gonna mix these together, see where that gets me. Pretty, oh, so relaxing. So this is still looking pretty blue, yeah? Which seems like a pretty natural segue into telling you that not all colors have the same mixing potency. So blues are gonna be the strongest when you mix them, yellows are the weakest, and reds are right there in the middle. So a little bit of blue is gonna go a lot further than a little bit of yellow. I'm gonna mix a little more of this ochre in there. Getting a little closer. But you know what, I feel like that ochre, because it's kind of a diluted yellow with a lot of oranginess in it, it's making this a little too dull now. I think I need a little brighter yellow in here just to kind of increase the saturation a little bit. Yeah, now we're getting closer. Ooh. Again, we're running into the situation where because this is flat paper and this is glossy wet paint, 
it looks a little different, but I do still feel like this is a slightly darker value than this. However, I don't want to put white in it because that's going to make it kind of like creamy, right? I, I don't want to take down the saturation really anymore. So I'm going to take a risk and I'm going to lighten it with a little bit more yellow. And then I may just have to adjust slightly from there in case it's too bright and too green now. I might have to add in a little more blue again. We'll see. We'll see what the colors tell us. That's pretty freaking close, but I do feel like it's slightly too light. Like it's got a little bit too much of like a Kelly green in there. Touch more blue in, darken it up a little bit. I want you to notice also how I'm pushing the value of the colors. I'm changing how light or dark they are without relying on just mixing in white or black. It's very important to pay attention to the value of your mixing colors and use those so that otherwise everything's just gonna get muddy so quickly. And that's a really big issue when it comes to foundation matching because a mistake that a lot of makeup artists use when they're working on darker complexions is they'll just add in a lighter foundation. But as you'll see in a second when I mix these foundation colors, lighter foundation shades have a lot of actual white in them Whereas deeper foundation shades have no white in them. If you're lightening them, you're gonna to wanna to lighten them with like an ochre or something so that they maintain that richness and saturation without getting ashy. So it's important to not rely on white and black to adjust the value. Okay, this is very close. <sighs> and only because I'm such a freaking stickler am I going to do this next thing. So this is not a particularly bright green that we've mixed and we've done that without having to neutralize it by adding in red, the complementary color to green. And the reason is because I've been using this more red undertoned blue that I have and a lot of this ochre, which is kind of an orangey, diluted yellow so it already made it so we didn't mix a super bright green however i still feel like this is a little bit greener than this but the value is pretty spot on so i may regret this because we're so close already but i'm gonna mix in just a touch of red to make it a little bit more neutralized like this like this is a, this is a slightly greener green than this and I'm gonna mix a little bit of each one of these because I feel like that's gonna be too orange and this is gonna be too red. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of both. Huh, we made it. I think that's as close as we're gonna get between these two mediums. Ta-da! Okay, so now I'm going to mix these two different foundation colors. And these are actually just drops of foundation. And you'll see that I only need these colors. It's just the primaries. And again, we have mixing primaries because pigment isn't perfect. But basically they're made out of the same stuff and there's nothing more challenging about mixing this color than there is about mixing this color. So to start with this one, objectively I can see that it's closest to this color, right? There's a lot of yellow in this. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna start off with a little bit of ochre, but this is not so bright a yellow. So that means that I wanna neutralize this a little bit so the yellow is not quite as obvious and the opposite of yellow is purple and purple is made out of my phone ringing. Sorry about that. So purple is made out of blue and red, right? So if I wanna neutralize this a little bit, then I'm gonna mix a little bit of blue and red in just a touch. So I'm just gonna use this blue a little bit and a little bit of this red and I'm sticking with because I'm trying to make purple I'm sticking with the purplier toned of my mixing primaries I don't want to use the orangey one I don't want to use the greeny blue and it's e always easier to start small when it comes to mixing especially because these pigments are so strong this is probably already too much honestly Okay, so that's that's less yellow now, right? But clearly it's too dark a value and it's also still too saturated, which if, if it's both too dark and too saturated, then, and it's a little bit creamier, I can assume that this is a time when it's safe to add in some white. Okay, look at that. It's looking like a flesh tone and we're pretty close. Let's spread this out so we can see it a little better, right? 
So these are very close, but I definitely feel like this looks more yellow to me. And this would be a really good example of what, in a lot of foundation lines, you'll see that um, foundations labeled as warmer and cooler. This seems to have a little more pink, whereas this is definitely more yellow. And if for the sake of demonstration, I'm trying to mix an exact match to that, then I feel like I just need to add in a touch of this pinky red. It's like this tiny little bit, right? But I still feel like it's a little more saturated and it's a little more yellow. So I'm gonna add in a little bit more white because this just seems creamier. The colors don't seem as strong. And I'm also gonna add in a little bit more of that red again. One, because the white is lowering the value and so I need to add a little bit of a darker color in. And two, because like I said, it's still a little too yellow. But we're getting very close. Too far, too far. Now the value is pretty spot on, but this is actually slightly too pink. And so I want to, if I want to neutralize pink, which is basically red with white in it, then I just need to put in a little bit of green, right? Which is blue and yellow. But again, we're working with like the tiniest little, little bits. Like that's kind of a lot actually. And I'm gonna stick with this more ochre neutralized yellow because I don't want to make this really bright and saturated like that yellow. Still a little too pink. Gonna mix the rest of this in here. I think just a touch more of this ochre color and we should be pretty close. Eh. And I just feel like there's a little more creaminess in that one than in this one. So just adding a touch of white. I think we're looking pretty good here. I don't know how it looks on the camera because I'm not looking at the monitor right now, but I imagine any little differences that you may perceive on the camera would be attributed to just the fact that it is a slightly different medium, but basically we've got the same color going on here. Okay, so now I'm gonna mix this color. Again, I'm gonna start off with some of this ochre, right? But this is a darker value, so I'm gonna mix in a little more of the purple, which I'm making by putting a little bit of blue and a little bit of red together, because for this color, I wanna neutralize the yellow, but I also wanna darken the value. So we'll see where that gets us. Okay, so we're in the same world, but this definitely looks more red to me, right? So, and it's also darker, so I wanna lighten the value a little bit and I wanna neutralize this red. So that means I wanna put a little bit of green in. And so I'm gonna use the ochre as the base for the yellow for the green. And then just a tiny touch of the blue cause I don't wanna darken the value really, but I do need to neutralize the redness of this. Spoiler alert, there's a lot of ochre in any foundation color, in case you didn't pick up on that. We're still too dark, so I just wanna see what happens if I add a little more ochre. So I wanna lighten it, but we're starting to get to a pretty neutral point. I'm gonna spread this color out a little bit so we can see it better. So the value is getting closer, and I'm, I don't know how it reads on camera, but this definitely has a little bit more of a pinkish tone, whereas this is looking a little more olive. This is where we get kind of nuanced, right? Because at this point we have all the colors in here. So you your eyes can pick up on all of them, but it's just a matter of seeing what's a little more dominant. To me, this has a little bit more of a purpley red undertone, and it's also a little bit lighter, whereas this is starting to have a more olive look to it. So I'm gonna add, but it's the value is still slightly darker on this. I'm gonna add a little bit of this purpley red, like the tiniest touch, but I'm also gonna add a little bit more ochre. There we go. Okay, and again, I think from medium to medium, this is as close as we're gonna get, which is pretty damn close. So there you have it. All right, I hope this was helpful to you guys. It's honestly a really fun exercise, and the more you practice it, the more you're gonna be able to see those subtle differences, and it's just gonna have such a positive impact on your artistry, whether you're doing your own makeup or other people's. It's a great thing to do. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter at Kiki G Makeup and subscribe to this channel if you are not already subscribed or else you'll be cursed so that 
all chocolate you eat tastes just like plain Hershey's chocolate bars, which basically tastes like brown wax. So you should probably subscribe and I will see you guys in a couple of days. Goodbye.